Today I'm going to show you how I created these artist pre magnets using a stamp set and the artist pre sublimation stamp inks. There are um, multiple ways that you can do this. You can use a combination of your sublimation inks with your stamps, also your sublimation markers, or you could even add in um, some paint, the sublimation paint by Artist Pre. So there's lots of different things that you can do here. So I'll just quickly go over this. The supply list is in the description below and a link to the blog post tutorial as well where I created these. I have a little bit of water with a paintbrush that I'm gonna use. I have these sublimation markers here. If you'd like to use them, you can. You can use them in the same way. Then a set of the sublimation stamps. Today I'm going to be using black and the orange and the yellow just because I really like this color combination with these stamps that are by Stampers Anonymous with Tim Holtz. It's a bird crazy collection. Then I'm going to need some acrylic blocks to use with the stamps, Artist Pre heat tape, and the Artist Pre iron on ink magnets is what I'm using. And this is an ink um, dauber that we'll be using. Also some baby wipes that's gonna clean off my stamps. Here is the Artist Pre siliconized protective paper and a pair of scissors and then also some copy paper and a pencil. So I have some copy paper and a pencil here. We'll also need a heat source. And I think that's everything. You want some heat safe um, gloves because it's gonna be hot when it comes out of your press, but we'll get to all of that here in a little bit. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna set some of this aside so we have some space to work with, is we're going to take one of our blanks and you use copy paper when you are working with the artist pre um, sublimation inks or paper uh, markers or paints you do not have to have a special uh, paper it works with just plain copy paper now if you are using the paints or more water than what we'll be using today you may want to use like watercolor paper that's a little bit heavier duty the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to trace with a pencil around our blank. This is going to give us our design area for where we can design within. Pencil does not transfer to your sublimation blank when you heat press it. So you want to make sure to use pencil and not a marker or a Sharpie. So we have our first one, let's go ahead, I'll do a second one because I have two blanks left here. And we can kind of color those out. So there is our blank. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to pick out our stamp. And these are just rubber cling stamps by Stampers Anonymous. Um, any stamps will work in your, from your stash. And I found that it cleaned up well with a baby wipe. So you wanna be careful and clean up any mistakes right away. You, If you get it on your clothes, the sublimation ink, you do not want it to be washed and dried. Or you do not wanna have it dry before you wash it. Otherwise it's going to set that ink. So I just used the black, black stamp pad and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna stamp this little guy partially on and off my template and take a baby wipe, um, non-alcoholic baby wipes for your stamps. And I'm just gonna wipe that off. Comes off very clean, that's just gonna dry there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take another stamp here for the other one. And I only need to ink the part of the bird that I'm gonna use. So there we go, clean that off. 
Always best to clean it off before it dries onto your stamp for best results. And then I'll just set that aside. Now what we're gonna use is, I'm gonna actually just use an acrylic, another acrylic block. Uh, you could use a transparency film. You could use the inside of a Pringles lid, uh, plastic, any, anything that you can work with that can pull up some color. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm not coloring the whole uh, design here all at once because I want these eyeballs to stay white. So I'm gonna take my orange ink and my yellow ink. Let's start with yellow. And if I just press it down here on this acrylic block, I'm going to use, and I'm gonna do a little bit of an overlap here, going to use this kind of like my paint palette. And I just wet the tip of my paintbrush and I can um, brush that off a little bit to get rid of some of the moisture. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start filling this in very lightly. You're not using a lot of liquid. So I'm just going to start, and you can kind of go with the image. Really, it's completely up to you. Uh, you can water the ink down a little bit to give you a different color. You can mix your inks to add some highlights in here. And you don't want to get it too wet because you are using copy paper. And I find that this is really cool technique to do because all of them are going to be different and you can control the colors that you're putting on there. You can add just a little bit of water to get a different shade. You can add more color. You can't really take away color once it's on there, but just kind of go with your image. Add some orange in here underneath to give it some dimension. And then on the beak. And then, and I'm really not using much water at all. I can add in now, sublimation inks will get brighter and darker as you press it, when it's pressed. So these are all going to turn out very, very vibrant, even if it looks light on here. So we'll, I've added a, some definition here, and we'll see once it's pressed how that really pops and turns out. So then I'm just going to do the same thing over here on this guy. And just have fun with it. It is something that you can play with. No two are going to turn out the same. And if your ink dries out on your acrylic or you feel it's getting too dry, you can always just add a little bit of water in there. Just a little bit. I got a little bit too much. Give your paper a chance to dry there. And then I'll add some details in here where there's shading. And just get creative. You never know what's gonna happen till you try it out. And then I'm gonna pull in some really bright orange for his beak. Okay, so now I have my birds covered and anything that you leave white is going to stay white. So the eyeballs I'm gonna leave intentionally white, but I'm gonna take this little dauber and you could use a sponge you can see I still have ink here. I'm gonna just pick up some colors here and you can mix it together. And then there's no exact science to this. I'm just adding color around it. I did want to have sort of a white outline 
around the bird. I'll show you this example here just so that it stood out a little bit. So I'm not getting extremely close to, and again, a gentle hand is always better when you're putting on ink. You can always go back and add more, but it's a lot more difficult to take it away. So you can use up that excess ink and this is going to brighten up when we press it. And this one I have more area to work with. And just keep on picking up that ink. You could also take your sublimation markers and you could do an outline if you'd like to. Keep in mind that whatever you add with your marker is going to show up. It's going to be added into that design. So, but I think that looks really, good. we'll see how those turn out. So I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna cut it apart again. I'm just using regular copy paper and I'm going to start working with just one design at a time. I'm going to take this heat tape and our blanks. So your white side of your blank is your sublimation side. On this side, it's a magnet, so it's not double sided. So I'm going to take the white side, I'm going to place it down on my blank. And then I'm going to secure it with heat tape. And you don't need a lot. You just need enough that it's not going to move. So there's one. And then I'm going to place this white side down here. And then I'm going to show the sublimation sandwich before we get to our heat press. So you're going to want to get your heat press or your what heat source you're using heating up to temperature. For this blank, it's for 400 degrees at 75 seconds. So you can go ahead and do that. This is protective paper. It is very, very important because you have this ink all around your design or even if you color very, very carefully within the lines, when it's heated up, that ink turns to a gas and it transfers to this blank. That means that any of that ink could essentially blow out of the area here, which means you wanna protect your heat press surfaces. So you wanna protect both underneath it and on top of it. So I'm just gonna cut a piece and you want your protective layers to be larger than your design and area. So you want to do a sublimation sandwich. So you have a layer of protective paper. You have your blank with your paper side up so that it's going to be pressed with your heat press first and then you're going to put a protective layer on top so you have a sublimation sandwich so it goes protective paper then your copy paper is on top with your blank underneath it and then you have your bottom protection if you get if you do not protect your heat press or your heat surface the ink can transfer to your surface, either your top platen or the bottom platen, and then it could affect your future projects because that ink could transfer to other objects as well. So we're gonna do the same thing for this one. And this Artist Pre Protective Paper is siliconized, so it doesn't, nothing sticks to it. So I have one sublimation sandwich 
I have another sublimation sandwich and I'm going to place my blank down on it with my copy paper on top and my protective layer on top. Now we'll go over and switch over to the heat press. Okay, so I have my heat press set and I have one that pulls out so that it's easier for me to put things on here. Um, again, you want this sublimation sandwich. So you want your protective paper. You want your blank with the copy paper up so that the only thing between your heat press platen or your hot surface is this part, this protective paper. And then I'm going to place both of them on here. And you wanna make sure that your protective paper is larger than your surface because you don't want that ink to blow out and get on your bottom platen or on your top platen. Now I'll show you something here. This is not an artist pre project project product but this is why you want this protective sublimation sandwich. I was pressing and wasn't thinking about it one day, and this is my heat press pad that I use inside of shirts. You can see where a sublimation print has left its imprint. So this is permanent here, and it could affect and transfer to future objects. I just had that on my heat press cart. So I thought I'd show you. So that is the major reason you have this protective paper here. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this all the way in and then I'm going to press this 400 degrees for 75 seconds. And I'm gonna do a fast forward because you don't need to listen to 75 seconds of my heat press. Okay. Now I want to be very, very, very careful with this because it is super hot. So make sure that you are protecting yourself. So I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna do a peak test. The first thing you can see if it'll show up on the screen is I do have ink on, the yellow ink has shown up there. So I'm gonna come here. Your blank is going to be very, very hot. Look at that. Let's zoom in on that. Oh, it looks awesome. So this looks great. I am going to take this Artist Pre protective mat. This is a silicone um, heat safe surface, protective surface. And I'm just gonna slide these off and onto this surface. And then I'm going to move them back to my table and we'll jump over there. Okay, so I just brought this back to my workspace. This is an Artist Pre protective pad. It is heat safe, and I use it for all of my sublimation from these flat blanks to even setting my tumblers and my mugs on after they come out of the heat press. It keeps my workspace protected, and we're going to take a look at the big reveal. Before that, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to be notified of future content. Also check out the description in the links below for all of the supplies that I've used in this video and a written tutorial on the Artist Pre blog about how I created this as well. So if you're like me, you are not a very patient person. So. If you need to, grab some heat safe gloves so you don't burn your little fingers. And we're going to take a look at this. So I'm going to take off the protective paper and I have my blank here. You can see this is the reason you need to protect your work surface. That sublimation ink will come out and if that gets on your press platen, it could transfer to other objects. You also, you can reuse this protective paper if it is not, doesn't have ink on it. If it has ink on it, it could transfer to future projects. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look. So here is your image. We'll set that down. And here is the finished 
magnet. Oh my gosh. Okay. I get so excited. And here is the second image. So now you have an entire new world to open up and do what you want. So I can take all of my card making stamps that I have supplies out the wazoo and I can use these with a sublimation with the sublimation inks or the sublimation markers. You can use your stamps. So the final thing that we have to do, I'm going to test this. Okay. It's cooled off and we're going to take, and it comes with these little magnets. You're going to peel the backing off and then it's sticky on the back side. And I'm just going to place that in the center. Do the same thing on this one. Again, be very careful. Metal blanks are super hot when they come out of that 400 degree heat press. And there we have our magnets. So I really like these guys. They just make me smile. And who does not need a smile? So I have all of these little magnets. And in the package, you get four magnets per package. So just something to be aware of. This is two packages I've opened, but I wanted to share this on the video. Now, stay tuned. I have another quick tip for you. I use the sublimation ink pads, but I'm going to share with you how you can do it in another way too. Now, I want to share another quick tip. What if you don't have the sublimation stamp sets? That's not a problem. If you have the sublimation markers, we can still do the same type of technique. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open these sublimation markers. And then what you wanna do is you want to take your markers and put them standing upright so the tip is down. And you wanna do that for about five minutes or so before you go to use them that's going to get the ink flowing in the proper direction, but you always wanna store your pens flat for, for the lifespan of when they're not in use, just to get the most out of them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you here. You can take your acrylic block or your plastic surface, and you can do the same thing like we did with the inks. So you could just color on it, and you're gonna see that ink transfer there. And then we can do the same thing with the orange. And then what you're going to do is I'm just going to use this little scrap as an example. You can take your paintbrush and I'm going to dab that off. And then you can do the same thing and you can paint with it. If your ink is starting to dry out, then you can just add a little bit of water to that. and you have the same sort of method. So you can do this with any of the sublimation products, even with the paint. You would you could use the same sort of artist palette on the acrylic block or on a plastic or even just in an artist palette for paint. So you can do that with your stamp inks, your markers or the sublimation paints. So you have lots and lots of options. Just wanted to share that quick tip with you. Thanks for joining me on this new adventure. I'm having a blast playing with these products and I can't wait to share more. Have a great day.